All right, guys. So what we have is uh, we have Ethan Epstein. Uh, we can you update his name. Uh, oh yeah, I, I will fix that for you. Uh, we have Ethan Epstein on the uh, right with um, Merfolk, and we have Chad Miller on the left with Delver Delver, which just means he's playing Del spells and Delver secrets. Uh, it's Squeaks as Delver, so it should be a good matchup. Both players are three and zero in round four of our state's tournament here. Uh, of seven rounds, uh, very awesome, very exciting. And, uh, he starts off with uh, Wonderwine Hub um, revealing a um, Merfolk and then playing Aether Vile, putting Aether Vile to a counter. Chad played Island Delver and he plays Cavern Souls, naming Merfolk most certainly. Uh, we are, <clears throat> our table spotter will shoot us a message here, let it, confirming for us that that is indeed what the Cavern of Souls is naming. E Ethan passes back to Chad on Upkeep Your Reels. Uh, thought Scour, uh, mm -hmm. flipping Delver into Insectal Aberration. Same and stuff. we have confirmed with our table spotter Ryan Wolf that that cavern is indeed set to Merfolk. Chad plays a mountain, moves to combat, and attacks for three. Yep. Alright, <clears throat> taking Ethan down to 17. Now we need to get back to the old days of standard and just have a rude chance to get to play. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was a spicy Young number. peasy. Young pyromancer, main phase two. Alright, and Ethan is activating... I was wondering if he was just doing it cuz, but no, he does have a curse catcher. Upkeep, he ticks that vial down to... Uh, up to two. Plays another cavern named Merfolk. I, get, I, I expect to see a mirror readery interplay here. Harbinger to, Ooh! Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Harbinger to bounce the insectal aberration and. Okay, oh, yeah. so the Harbinger came down off the vial and he gets a mirror readery. And he's attacking it for one. Oh, this that's is, rough. This is pretty crazy, yeah. brutal. Uh, Woo! Maybe you can shoot Ryan a message and ask them to have them use our dice. They're yeah. a little bigger. All right, so untap. He still, uh, Chad still has a young pyromancer, so he's not out of this game yet. And he has a handful of spells. I see a Tasker, a Forked Bolt, which would have been great before the Mirror That's Rangery. a great start from Ethan. I think uh, this game could be over next turn if he just has a, a uh, Lord. Master of Waves to yeah. follow up here. Master of Waves or a, two Lords. Yeah, that'd be so fun. Like, he could... He can potentially just play his whole hand here if he takes that up and puts a uh, Mirror Rangery into play. He yeah. really just dump his hand. All right, and so Island Serum Visions, maybe? Nope, yeah, Delver. He's, he's recast the Delver. Ethan has a uh, Curse Catcher up, too, so this is pretty relevant here. Yeah, uh, Steam Vins. Going down to 18. Or no, it's I, think, I think we're going to see the end to a Mirror Reader here. 16. Yeah, a Fork Bolt pointing at the Mirror Reader. And triggering Young Pyromancer. I'm going to take a look here. Uh, what Fork Bolt does is two damage divided. Uh, both being uh, targeted uh, onto the uh, regery. Fork bolt, you can target to either a creature or a player, two creatures. Yep. Or two players, if you happen to be playing multiplayer. Truth. <laughs> Alright, so, Mirror Regery going down. Yeah, uh, it looks like Ethan is considering something, but yes, the, the regery is going down. He's considering how important it is to make uh, him be tapped out uh, by sacrificing the curse catcher, and I think he uh, yeah, I opted think, out on that. I think uh, that it's more important to just keep bodies on the field yep. to keep pace with that young pyromancer. It is dual to know that Chad Miller is, in fact, missing his black mana. He's yeah. He has a Tasker in his hand that he's not anywhere near casting. Regery coming into play. Oh, there's it another one. It would have been brutal. It would have been very brutal. And let's keep in mind that that vial is still on two, so a uh, Lord of Atlantis could be coming in at any moment. Thought Scour. Thought himself triggers. All right, and this is he an could, attack step. He could go and try to double block and then get blown out here with a uh, Lord of Atlantis. That, uh... Aether Vials and Lords, they're a dangerous com combination. Dark Slip Shorts hitting the bin and a Gurmag Angler hitting the bin. Yeah. That's something he didn't want to see go, but he did uh, pick up a uh, Snapcaster Mage. She has Terminate Snapcaster, it looked like a land, and maybe Tassiger? He's still missing the black mana. Yeah, he's still missing black mana, which is not good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure, like, the black mana would be helping. He could cast the Terminate, cast the Tassiger, but it, it's rough. For sure. Alright, yeah, and there's the Lord. Yeah. Now, I know Ethan Epstein personally, and he plays up at uh, Hometown Hobbies, and mm -hmm. he top eights with this deck consistently. Every weekend, top eight splits with this deck. 
I borrowed the deck from him, and I draw, you know, moderate hands, but he draws the most explosive, silly hands I've ever seen. Some people just tap it. Yeah. During during playtests, I can't tell you how many times he's uh, he's exploded Mary Regeries onto me, but it's it's happened, and it's it's pretty brutal. This is his baby. Uh, it's the best part about uh, formats like Modern and Legacy and Vintage is that you'll have players who get to stick with one deck over a course of mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and they just become so fluent with it. It's just like another language, and they love it, and they just they know all the plays, they know mm -hmm. all the matchups, and. And from what from what I'm hearing from you, Ethan seems to be one of those players with Murpho. Absolutely, he he even actually went as far to pick up Force of Wills, Dazes, and uh, some number of uh, what, what's the three man on True Name Nemesis. True Name Nemesis for Legacy. Yeah, uh, for the deck. and and Cards <laughs> Dynamite. Oh, that was the worst. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess it wasn't any better than my Journey to Nowhere. Uh, well, I mean, you. It, it probably was better. Actually. It was no, it wasn't better. It wasn't. Alright, so we're in Chad's main phase, <laughs> and he's staring down uh, oh boy. Two, two Lords, Curse Catcher, and the Harbinger of the Tides with an Aether Fire still on two, and, and two Cavern of Souls. It's, a, it's important to note that that Delver did not flip. Alright, so, so he, he got in with that young Pyromancer because he knew that Ethan would not block with his Lord. If he did block with the Lord, it'd be better for Chad. He, uh... Pointed at the Aether Vial, I assuming saying that he wants to keep it on two. Yeah. Um, th this deck is a wall of two drops. Mm -hmm. um, and aside from Reedry and Master of Waves, they typically stay he's on gonna two. He's going to turn them all sideways. Yeah, besides he's just the Lord. getting in there. Yeah. Uh, they all ha aside from the Lord, they all have Island Walk. And Chad has two Island He's going to terminate the Lord of Atlantis, I assume. If he terminates the Lord of Atlantis, they'll lose Island Walk, and then he could block... Yeah, he can trigger him double block Mary Regery and uh, ending ending the Lord's reign. Yeah, he could kill both Lords. If he wanted to, he could trade the Delver with uh, the one of the other creatures. For sure. He could, uh, uh, Har is Harbinger a 2-2 two -two or a 2-1? It's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Okay, so he could trade it with a Curse Catcher. Oh, he's going to he's gonna make multiple tokens oh. and, and make some sweet trades here. Oh, yeah. This is, this is going to be brutal. Uh... Merfolk seem to be in firm control of this game, but don't count Grixis out because they have oh, the tools. Yeah, they, they have tools. For and sure. The, and that young Pyromancer has been sitting there for a couple of turns, and if you don't answer a young Pyromancer, it's it's spells of doom 90% of the time. Absolutely. So I think we're going to see... Double block on Reedry, and, and then, then a block, block on the Curse Catcher, and he still gets to have the Delver. Mm -hmm. And then he just takes two off the... Well, he'll take three. Yeah, he will take three. He'll take three because the Regery won't die till damage Ethan is dealt. Ethan has one card in hand and it is in fact an Aether Vial. Uh, that is, okay, this is not looking good for Ethan now. Talk about a swing. Yeah. Like, I I thought we were ready for game two. Yeah, and then Chad sure. Miller's like, hey, remember my name. Yeah, you that's, you see that young Pyromancer? He yeah. He's business. Him and his goggles, we're here to fight. Yeah. All right, so Chad takes three down to nine from the Harbinger. Untap, Delver Trigger reveals F and M promo Serum Vision. Yep. And now we have Insectal Aberration. Uh, he's got a Tassiger and a Snapcaster Mage and a Serum Vision. And the Serum heart. Vision to find him more stuff. Like, Yikes. oh, this is. All right, Trigger. We get another. I'm thinking we're gonna see a game two here, but on the well, that's side. what that's what we would have said a couple minutes ago. Yeah. On the way. reverse, so. We got some uh, we got some spice though in the in the board, so we'll, right. we'll be able to talk about those in a minute. If you're Ethan, what do you want to draw here? Uh, um, I I think the only thing that he has that like uh, gets him like partially back into this game is like a, like a, a master of the ways for three. He can try to attempt to race, maybe. That's three ways to get him three elementals. Does he have any main board dismembers? He does not. Okay. He plays Vapor Snag. Vapor Snags. Okay, so Vapor Snag would. If he got the Vapor Snag, he could. You bounce the Delver, or you bounce. Uh, I think this this Tasker uh, seals the deal here. Yeah, this is this is looking bad. This uh yeah this game definitely turned. On a dime, but we have uh, some sweet cards to talk about once we get to the sideboarding here. But that game just took a huge turn. This is this is not looking good. Did you see the catch of the draw? I uh, I did not. I, I missed it. 
Uh, like just, a... I see a comment in the Twitch chat asking no sound. Do you, I want to confirm with the Twitch chat. You guys can hear us now. Yeah, that correct? was that was a while ago yeah. during the text right, while we weren't making here. sure. Yeah. yeah, we did. We do mute the mics. Uh, we were not aware that while we're playing a duck tech, we cannot mute our mics. We now know that we must not mute our mics during a duck tech, so that has been fixed. Lightning bolt on the harbinger, leaving Ethan with nothing triggering the Empyromancer again. It is fair to note that Ethan uh, tends to be the guy that will not concede a match until he is in fact dead. Uh, where While I see some merit in playing to, to all your outs... Um, I think there are no outs. Yeah, and also the timer, you need to keep in mind the timer and so mm -hmm. that you can have it, give yourself enough time to win games two and three. But to be fair, Merfolk does typically win their games quickly. Yep. This is very true. Uh, we'll see uh, what happens here. Uh, what Ethan draws. I mean... Alright, he has an Aether Vial in hand. Rips. I didn't see it. It, it looks like it was a land. Alright, he just passes back, so... The he's Aether Vial is on two. He's gonna get crashed in. He can currently swing for 7, 9, 12. Oh, man, Ethan's gonna pick him All right, up. I'm... All right, so let's talk about cyborgs. Uh, in Ethan Epstein's cyborg, he has three hibernation, one tide binder mage, two spell skites, three Hercules recall, two monastery siege, two seas claim, one chalice of the void, and one echoing truth. Do you like monastery siege in this matchup? I think I love monastery siege. All right, let's let's bring monastery siege up on the up on the board here. This is a card that Ethan's had a lot of a uh, lot of. Uh, a good experience with is a card he really really likes in these types of uh, matchups. Uh, so if we click, yep. he likes this card in a lot of matchups. He says he was a lot of times he was like, uh, this is how he, he beats the the burn decks. Mm -hmm. He talks about how he uh, this is how he beats them. And I, and this uh, Chad Miller's deck has a lot of spells. It has a lot of targeted removal, yeah. which is what Monster Siege yeah. is good at. So we also have uh, Echoing Truth, yeah. which uh, Gurmog Angler. And Insectal Aberration are very, and Tasker are very mm -hmm. weak to bounce spells. Yes. So that'd be good. Do you like Tidebinder Mage for tapping down I, Young Pyramus, or is that too narrow? So. I, I think it's a little narrow. I think I like Echoing Truth, Spell Skites, and, Monastery Seas. Yeah, I agree. Uh, now, this is the hardest part about the Merfolk deck. What do you take out? Because we got a we got Aether Vials and Creatures. See, there, there sometimes seems to be routes that Ethan, that, uh, Ethan will take. Uh... Sometimes he uh, will, uh, depending on the matchups he plays, like he, and John does, he plays Seize Claims and tries to uh, uh, hinder their mana, but since he's playing against a Blue Day deck, base deck, I think he will opt out of that. I don't think he'll try to aggressively hurt on his mana, although he did notice that he was uh, hurting on black for a while. Right. So he might end up taking that out, but I think he takes the Spreading Seize spreading out. Spreading Seize out, and, and then, then so that's four cards. And then and he brings then he gets... in the Monastery Seize and Echoing Truth and maybe just a spell sky. All right, well, that, that seems good. On Chad Miller's side, Cyborg, we have one is at Staticaster, one Counter Squall, one Rakdos Charm, one Spell Sky, a Vandal Blast, an Engineered Explosives, a Surgical Extraction, two Blood Moons, two Dispels, two Thought Seizes, and two Vampiric Links. What do you like? Um, so I think I just like removal spells. <laughs> uh, any and all removal spells that you can put in. I think Engineered explos Explosives is really good. Um, anything that. Uh, any. It, any Two for one removal spells, like in yeah. the area, at least two for one, hopefully two for ones. Mm -hmm. um, what about do you want to go the artifact destruction route, or do you just want to ignore? Oh, the absolutely files? not. No, I, I think that's some uh, some one of the mistakes uh, some players make when they play against more folk. Mm -hmm. They they're too worried about aether vial. Uh, aether vial sure is lets those explosive degenerate turns ha happen, right. but the deck doesn't need aether vial to win the games. It, 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 the deck often does a really good uh, job at winning games without it. Merfolk is what we call a, a critical mass deck. Yep. In order to rent win, it needs a critical mass of creatures. Like <clears throat> it cannot win with one merfolk. It needs a lot of them. Like. Burn cannot win with a single burn spell. It mm -hmm. needs a critical mass of burn spells. So the best way to fight it typically is to use uh, removal spells and board wipes to just keep their creature count down as low as possible. I would like to point out two things. One, uh, Ethan has a spicy a spicy card in his main deck. He's playing one Kira, Great Glass Spinner. Oh, and yeah. I guarantee that card will not be coming out of no, this no. matchup. Kira. Because it will be great in this matchup. Also, the other thing that I want to point out that 
on his deck registration sheet, his deck name is in fact Mono Blue Jund. Is that what it says? <laughs> it says Mono. You know, I didn't even think to look because I just typed Merfolk. But yes, it de indeed does say Mono Blue Jund. <laughs> um, so what's what's the reasoning in that name? Uh, he so he he picks it because he 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 loves he loves the deck so much that. Uh, people often will will tell him that Jund is the best deck in the format, but he loves Merfolk. Yeah. So his, his what he his it's his, his Jund. It's his Jund. Okay, so it's his that makes Jund. sense. Yeah. It is what he always will and always will like. He always plays in modern. He he literally won't play anything else. Makes sense. So, so is, a Chad is thing. keeping seven and Ethan is mulganing. It looks like. Uh, that's what it looks to be. All right, we're we're gonna take that as an opportunity to look at the card you just mentioned, Kira. Great. The Great Glass Spinner, which uh, modern players will probably know, but maybe not all some of the newer players, so we're going to bring that up. Mm -hmm. uh, Drag it over and, and then unclick the... this. And click Boom. The and there it is. Kira <laughs> Great Glass Spinner is a blue blue one generic for a legendary creature spirit with flying 2 2 text on it. Creatures you control have, quote, Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time in a turn, can counter that spell or ability, unquote. So, it makes it so that no creature can die to a single spot removal spell. You must have two spot removal spells to kill any of them. And this also counts for Cura, yep. which is one of the most important features. It's great against uh, decks like Jund and Grixis that load up on Lightning Bolts and Abrupt Decays and Terminates and Culligan's Commands and those he's sorts of things. He's keeping his six. He scryed, kept it on top, played Mutable and Anthropile, and this is going to be, this will be a good game. It'll be interesting. All right, so we got Chad Miller shocking down to 18. Shocking. <laughs> and casting a Sierra Visions. Drawing Gurmag Angler and Scrying, putting both on the bottom. So uh, Patrick Sullivan said something interesting in a recent set talks. He said that if modern continues to be a thing in the next three to four years, which I know it will, he thinks that Serum Visions will be joining the ban list of cards because it just lets blue decks um, be too Playing consistent. Chalice for one here, that's pretty, pretty strong. Uh, Serum Visions doesn't do much in the face of Chalice for one. All right, so how many one mana spells are in Chad's deck list? Let's take a look. Okay. He is playing... Um, and Delver it doesn't, he <laughs> just scooped him up. He scooped him up. All right. So the answer is a lot. Well, yeah. He plays a lot. We're going to go ahead and do that. We, he to, had, to answer your question, yeah. Uh, I think he's wrong. But only because he didn't have all the information. Today we just got an announcement. It, that's true. That uh, Modern is being taken off the Pro Tour, which means Wizards will no longer uh, as much uh, scrutinize, ag aggressively approach the format. So Modern will be a an occasional Grand Prix format. It, I don't. Know, is it still going to be a P PPTQ format? Uh, there's a possibility. Uh, and even so, like they're not going to scrutinize the ban list the way exactly. that they currently do, and it also should help with the price of singles. Exactly. So that's it's really awesome and interesting. Uh, I think like because if we had kept going the route, I think in, in a couple of years, a lot of cards. There's a lot of cards that like are on chopping block material. Uh, you have cards like Collected Company, Serum Visions, even Aether Vial. Aether Vial is an extremely powerful card. That could potentially get the axe, but not anymore. I don't think, uh, like, all the fast mana cards, uh, Mox Opal, things like that, could have eventually gotten an axe of some kind. But um, I think now that this update has been announced, that a lot of your decks are safe. Uh, um, <laughs> you can feel free to spend some money. I'm wondering if the, I'm wondering if that concession might have been based more on. Uh, Chad's hand at the time and not on his actual deck list because out of his full 75 he has 28 one mana spells unless I'm miscounting and he has he has Colgan's commands which he may have boarded out uh, I will I will tell you why he uh, he can see there uh, he turn one here in visions mm -hmm. uh, draws Gurma, uh, draws Gurma Angler scribes puts two non lands at the bottom he only had one land in his hand and he drew and it must yeah, have just, just go to game three because I mean yeah. it's it takes Chad a longer time to win the game, well, so I, he needs yeah. that clock. I tell you what, as a personal friend of Ethan, uh, he's a really close friend of mine. Uh, we actually drove up here together uh, to come to this event, and uh, he is a nervous person. He gets nervous, and I bet that was a huge relief off yeah, his Yeah, that's probably a good confidence boost. I, Ethan, you have no reason to be nervous. I, I'm sure you'll be re-watching this, and you're doing well. Chad, 
as well. I, it's good to know your deck, know your weaknesses, and be aware of the clock and know when you need to just scoop them up and go to the next game. Chad's also another player that I'm very familiar with. I see him all the time at these state events, and all the time that when we go to whenever I travel to other events, I always see him, and he's always doing well. So yeah, uh, when I, whenever I, I don't see Chad at a, many of our local events, but it's always the bigger ones that mm -hmm, I see him absolutely. coming out to, and he's typically doing well. And I also love his shirt. Oh, he's taking sixteen. Yeah, those are uh, some sweet, sweet uh, EV EV and EV evolutions. Yeah. So awesome, he's awesome. He, he's going down he's going down to sixteen. And Ethan has spreading seas, spreading seas, Wonderwine Hub, Muto Vault, Aether Vile, Lord, Harbinger of the Tides. Um It's alright. Uh turn one vile, turn two seas. He didn't bring out the spreading seas. He did not so he so what he, I assume uh, Ethan's a fan. Mm -hmm. Uh for a while I actually had to convince him to the Aether Vile. To uh he, he was playing Spreading Seas in his main deck uh, mm -hmm. a few months ago. Well, that's because of Eldrazi Winter. Uh, we need to reveal off that. Yep, okay. Reveal yeah. Master of the Waves. Yeah. He was a he was a fan of um he was a fan of uh, playing uh, Spreading, Spreading Seas Spreading against the Eldrazi yeah. deck. And, yeah. and he played Seas Clemens in his main deck and then he had moved uh, Seas Clemens to his sideboard and I believe Chad kept a one lander. Uh, did he keep another one lander? Yeah, he. Uh, I, I think he just discarded oh, Rakdos Charm. It's gonna be brutal. Kept too. the one lander. Now he's off black mana. Oh no, he kept a one lander. Oh my god. Oh. Oh no, draw a lamp. Give it, us a game. He did bring it. He gets the thought scout. He gets to get a chance there. Interesting note. He did bring he in artifact him. removal. He targets him. Yeah, he targets. He, he so drew, he targeted he Ethan, drew. he drew. He did not draw a land. Does uh, he have eight in hand now? Uh, how many cards are in that hand? One, two, three. I can't, I can't get it. I will right, check, check, with the, check with the spotter. spotter. Um, Ethan plays a um, uh, Mutavault and is considering... It'll, it'll be faster if I go down. Okay. Uh, uh, hey, hold on. What? I... Ask if Ethan just played that Mutavault because I think he attacked with it. Just stop them, please. All right, guys. One minute. We're gonna check with our table spotter. All right, right, and we're back. All, right, about that, all is good. Uh, Ethan uh, had picked up the top card, but did not look at it. Our L1 judge decided that all was fine, and Chad had seven cards, and then he drew into his eighth one. What so. about the mutable? Uh The mutable he did not attack with. Okay. It, it, the way he uh, moved it with his hands, it seemed like he might have. Well, he drew a land, but uh, we know all too well that Ethan has another Spreading Seas. Yeah, so you can imagine that Mountain will be coming an island quite soon. And Ethan gets to draw a card for his trouble, which is an Aether Vial. But Ethan gets put off a land. So we'll, we'll have a game. Yeah, I mean, Merfolk is... If, of all the decks in Modern to operate on two lands, Merfolk is not the worst one. Though he'd yeah, rather he, have two blue. He would rather have two islands for sure. Yeah. And he has Serum Visions to find. All right, so he, he's going to have Young Pyromancer is going to get there. Ethan could lose this game. Yeah, I mean, this Young Py Pyromancer is not dying again. And we know the longer Young Pyromancer stays on the board, the more value it generates. Absolutely, and he has a chance to find lands here, and he does, but he only finds an island. Oh, but he sees a Watery Grave. And a oh, no, Polluted Delta and Snapcaster Rage, so I can definitely see that uh, Polluted Delta going on the top here. Doesn't need that Snapcaster. Is he is full? Yeah, he's got plenty of spells in his hand. He this, just he just needs the ability to cast them. This game is actually slipping from Ethan. Yeah, but uh, you know this one could turn turn on a dime the same way that game one did. True. All right. Tire gets Ethan. Ethan mills two. He draws the Pluta Delta that he described at the top off the Serum Visions. 
plays the Delta? Oh, he had an island in hand. Okay, so he's hiding the fact that he has mana. Yep. Or that, he has, that he has colored mana other than blue, which is a good play. He plays the Delver and passes. Ethan draws... Monastery uh, Siege, was it? Yep. Yep, okay. Um, so, Curse Catcher and Aether Vial. So, he got to cast two spells, which is good. Still, he needs a third land. He needs to start... He needs to build game, a board. This game would have uh, quickly slipped away from Chad if Ethan hadn't missed a land drop, but Ooh, yikes. I mean, re- that's one of the worst cards that Chad could reveal to Ethan because he, he flips his Delver and he has a removal spell for an impending creature, and now he has yeah. access to a Blood Crypt. Yep. And now this game is so, so... I, I think this is we're going to end up wrapping up this game. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be over soon. So he's going to fetch in shock. I imagine he's getting Blood Crypt here, assuming he has one in his list, which... Occasionally, these Delver decks will not play Blood Crypt, but he does. He does. The, the high pitch, Noah, calm down. Yeah, um, we, we get excited. As, as we told the Twitch chat earlier, we are we are passionate individuals. Oh, that's Coddle! Hey, Coddle! I'm glad you're watching, man. Hope right. you're having a good time. Bolt on the Curse Catcher. Trigger the Young Pyromancer. Curse, he sacks the Curse Catcher in response. And then it almost looked like Chad paid for the Curse Catcher. He tapped that island after. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm just... I don't know. Maybe well, I'm slightly confused, which is possible. Maybe, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it is Maybelline. <laughs> maybe he paid for the Curse Catcher to send a message. Sure. He said, yeah, I got stuck on mana, but too bad. It doesn't matter. All right. So, what does what does Ethan have? What what's his best draw? What could get him out of the situation? He did get he got his third land. Uh, he needs to remove that young pyromancer, and I don't see a way for him to do so. Uh, dis- did he board in dismember? He has no dismember. He does no dismembers. Cycle. Okay. All right. Like he uh, needs... so he, he has bounce spells, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, and there's. Uh, okay. He attempted to cast Harbinger of the Tides, and it met with a mana leak. Ethan then has to pass back to Chad, who untaps and draws. I think he needs an array of spells oh, here. Like, I just saw an electrolyze in Chad's hand. Yikes. That's real bad if Ethan ever gets anything on the board. I think Ethan needs to draw an echoing, echoing truth just not so to die. So five, so he's coming for nine, lightning bolt and forked ball. It's over. All right. Uh, that was a great effort, Ethan. Congratulations, Chad, with Delver Delve. <clears throat> Both players getting stuck on mana uh, in the early game. Uh, Ethan was able to um, aggressively attack his mana sources, but off the spreading seas, he had no luck into drawing a third land of his own. Before it was too late, uh, the young pyromancer taking over the game. Uh, 